So, what do I have in my hand here? This is, no, I know it looks like Santa's sleigh, but that's not what it is. This is a solution to a problem that I had my kids create. Uh, they designed it by identifying a problem first together as a class, and they came up with this solution to it. It is a tablet stand. It's a funky tablet stand, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You can also see it's fairly, pretty large. There's the size of my head, and there's the size of this tablet stand. It's probably something we can improve is making it more compact. So this is the first prototype that we'll need to look at how to fix it. And in my last video, I talked about why I want to bring 3D printing into the classroom, how it can be beneficial, and what process I went through to investigate different tools, different 3D printers, and what requirements I needed or wanted in a 3D printing machine. And I ended up getting this Robo 3D printer back here. And that's what this just came off of a few minutes ago. You can hear the fans on it still going. Um, as you can see, it works fairly well. This is about the 12th or 15th. I don't know, I haven't kept track, but have done several prints on it so far over the past couple of weeks and none of them have failed. I do want to give a little bit of kind of an overview and just a little review about how the process has worked. And we're doing this, uh, this solution here as part of our invention hour, which I'm also going to make another video about because it really warrants a deeper discussion of why and how to do um, invention hour, which is sort of like one hour of invention a week with the students, the, an actual authentic process of identifying and solving problems. That's basically what invention is. Let's take a look at this model first of all, so I can show you a few issues I've come across with the printer. Even though none of the prints have failed, and even though it prints nice large prints, which you're not gonna get on most printers, especially this one was $720. To get this size, you have to go you know, over $2,000 in most cases for most printers. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with the uh, the process. It was basically just plug and play. I plugged in the little uh, uh, USB thumb drive that came with it, and the flash drive had uh, the installation on it and a video showing you how to do it. Um, now, one thing that was confusing is that the video said I would need to use this Z up and down axis to calibrate it and get some good tension in the right distance, but it never asked me for that. When I pressed start on the first model I did, uh, it includes several models. I started with the whistle. It just went straight down to the print bed and sort of calibrated itself, but it did touch the, the glass, which made me a little concerned. So I'm just gonna show you uh, what it looks like here. This will be the third print I do, and then I'll show you the quality of some of the prints. Um, the whistle came out perfectly, pretty much. The second print had a few problems, so I wanna look at those, and maybe somebody can give me some tips on how to fix them. Okay, so it starts, it writes the layers. All I've done is I've selected a pre-made model here. We're going to be making our own right now. We've got uh, the ziggurat of Ur. And the only complaint I would have for this process, you can see it's sort of just self-calibrating. It dips down, determines the level, and then it's going to sort of do a self-calibration uh, procedure. should be pretty much good to go. And it looks like it's drawing the outline for where it's going to work. Let's see how it's sticking. I did put some glue, and if you notice, it kind of snagged up here. This is the only real design flaw so far that I've seen with it, is the spool holder is at a really kind of wonky angle. It comes up and feeds into the top, but especially when it starts getting lower in the spool, since it's trying to pull it sort of sideways, it pushes against there. You can see I also put a bunch of just scotch tape there to hold the spool in place because without that it'll slide all the way over and slip down sideways, causing an even bigger problem. So that sort of created a little resistance. I'm sure I could print out some sort of a little gasket thing to put on there and just slide a ring on there or something. People have probably already made that. So you can see I'm making a bow tie now. I made the crazy glasses. I'll show those in just a minute. But let's zoom in and see how it's doing with the actual print here. As you can see, uh, 
looks pretty solid for this one. So while that Robo 3D prints in the background printing off the uh, Robo Blue um, sample model of the bow tie, I wanted to show you what the second print came out like. This was the the eye the sunglasses, okay, and you can see the front of it. This was the bottom surface that it printed came out pretty great. If you see some texturing or some streaking on it, that's because I used a glue stick to help it stick. And on the edge, you'll see it's less, um, it's more shiny and more smooth. Well, that's because there wasn't glue stick on that part. I didn't fill the whole surface well enough. Um, and the problem with that is you'll actually see, see it bent up a little bit. It lifted there. So the glue stick definitely does help prevent it from lifting or warping. Now, um, speaking of warping, it looks pretty great until you get to certain parts. If you look at the nose piece there, there's some, uh, let's see if I can show you, there's some little gaps in it. See those little gaps and, um, you know, sort of goopy spots? So it, le it lifted a little bit on some of the layers. There's a little lift there on the inside of the eye piece as well. And I want to show you down here especially, this is where the big problem was, the little hinge area. It was supposed to make a curved uh, little top to it, sort of a curved edge with a divot or a little bump in on the top and bottom and that's what would keep it in place just through tension but you can see this open sort of cross hatched uh, framing there shows that it actually flaked off and broke off because that part was really poorly um, fabricated it just sort of uh, it didn't adhere really it didn't go across and I don't know if that's because of the area that I was doing it's such a small area or because it was curved surfaces or what the deal is you can see the flat at flat surfaces it does like a champ, no problem. And I haven't changed any of the default settings on this thing. It's still set at just medium print quality um, or whatever the default settings are. I haven't changed the print quality. I haven't changed the, uh, the speed. I haven't changed any of that stuff. So it's possible that changing those will help, but I'm starting to wonder, is it the air temperature of the room because it's not an enclosed case? Could that be causing a problem? Could it be uh, the quality of the PLA that they provided with the kit itself? I really don't know, I'm gonna have to do some experimentation, but if anybody has any ideas of why these details in the glasses would break off, both the little hinge part on the glass frame and the little divot, uh, little bump hinges on the temples themselves. They're a similar kind of shape and they both just totally flaked. They had huge gaps and, and holes in them to the point where they just cracked off very easily. But otherwise, it's been very easy to use, super easy plug and play and pretty, Pretty happy with it. I'm just gonna have to work out some of those kinks. Let's see how it's doing on the on the bow tie. Again, I haven't tweaked anything or made any changes to this. I just plugged it in and pressed play. And this is the quality that's come out with, so I'm pretty pleased overall. There's only a few kind of minor issues we've run into. One of them, if you look carefully here, it's these dark splotches. And what's happening is, uh, I'm not quite sure what's happening. I got a little worried because this didn't show up on the first 10 or so prints that we did. It only started showing up very recently after printing out some of our other models. Here's another model we did. You can see this one was done uh, in a different filament. This is a wood fiber filament. And this is the Great Pyramid of Khufu. But we did a cutaway view so you can see the interior passageways and chambers. Okay, so that would seem to have more educational value, more interest than just making an, a pyramid from the outside, which doesn't give a sense of scale or, or purpose. By cutting it away and showing the passages, the grand gallery, the king's chamber, we can get a better idea of things. So this one, as you can see, doesn't have any of those dark splotches. We printed out some of those in the green filament also, which is a generic glow-in-the-dark filament that I ordered from another company uh, for about $40 a spool. And here is the first thing I printed out with it which as you can see, it's pretty big also. It's modular. This, one, this is a robot model that came with the printer as one of the models and just prints out in pieces that snap together. And you can see there's no dark patches on this either. What's going on is the dark patches are these blobs that appear. And at first I was worried when I saw them, I thought maybe the printer itself was melting some of its components. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case. I don't think that's the case because it still seems to be perfectly intact. What I think is happening is some of the filament is getting stuck or leaking somehow at the hot end level and then forming globs that then get overheated or cooked, basically scorched. This filament is PLA, polylactic acid, which is a, a sugar-based plastic. And so it kind of gets burnt, basically. And then it globs down and makes an extra blob on top of what should be extruded normally. Um, 
what concerns me about that more than the than the discoloration, uh, it hasn't caused any prints to fail, but it does make these sort of the texture changes. So the density changes at those spots, but also it makes a blob. I don't know if you can see inside here. It's a little bit hard to see, but it actually sticks out those blobs. And normally the hot end is hot enough that it sort of just wipes right through it, but sometimes it has to lift up and I'm concerned that that could be a hazard for causing the print to fail or somehow misaligning the whole rest of the print. Hasn't been an issue so far, but if anybody knows the exact cause of this problem, it could be the heat level on the extruder and the hot end. It could be the filament. It could be the printer itself. I'm not sure. And that's a tough thing about 3D printing is there's so many variables involved. There's the printer, body, and mechanics of it. There's the software you use, then there's the filament you use, and there's the settings you have inside of it, the, the heat level and everything. Another issue that I want to kind of show, and this one has been happening since the very beginning, is what I'm going to call Z banding or Z ribbing. So what that means is it's vertically along the Z axis, and you can't really see it with this filament because it's kind of uh, translucent, it's harder to see. So I'll show you another example here with the, with the whistle. Certain filaments show up better than other ones for this artifact, and certain filaments seem to have more of this problem than other ones do, which is interesting, is that the layers are not all even. If you have a completely vertical rise, it should be straight up. Some will be a little wider and some will be a little narrower than others, making this banding and ribbing effect. It's pretty faint, it's not serious, and it doesn't affect the functionality of the models really. Obviously, the larger the model, the less you're going to notice these very small, very tiny, less than a millimeter variations in layer width. But it is kind of an annoyance and a nuisance. It's less than perfect. Uh, without those banding and ribbing issues, I'd say the print quality of this printer is pretty much spot on perfect. Um, so that's a minor annoyance that seems to be based on the machine itself, um, possibly due to calibration, possibly due to some of the vertical rods or components. I haven't been able to figure it out yet, but there are discussions about it on the Robo 3D forum. And you can actually find this problem with other printers as well. If you search online for Z banding or Z ribbing, you'll see this is uh, this problem is not unique to this printer, but it is um, kind of an annoyance. So overall, I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the quality of this printer. It's not perfect, but for the price, you get a lot of bang for the buck. This printer costs about the same price as an iPad we're talking about here to allow you to fabricate things from your imagination and from free CAD software and to solve problems with actual physical objects. Um, and to create very large printouts to do so, which you don't get on 90 to 99% of the printers out there in this sub $1,000 price range.